वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू एवरी वन टूडे वी विल डिस्कस द टॉपिक यूनिवर्सलाइजेशन ऑफ एलिमेंट्री एजुकेशन एंड बिफोर आई बिगिन विद द टॉपिक आई वुड लाइक टू इंट्रोड्यूस माई सेल्फ आई एम मिस दीप्ति मधुरा असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर फ्रॉम एमिटी इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ एजुकेशन न्यू डेली सो लेट्स फर्स्ट अंडरस्टैंड दैट वॉट एग्जैक्टली इज एलिमेंट्री एजुकेशन इन इंडिया एंड हाउ आर द स्कूल स्टेज इज डिवाइडेड इन इंडिया सो द फर्स्ट स्टेज इज द प्री स्कूल which is for the students in the age group of 3 to 6 years of age next comes in the elementary level which which is divided into two parts primary and the upper primary the next one is the secondary and the last one is the higher secondary level so basically we are saying that the elementary level of education is divided into two parts so elementary has two parts the first one is the primary and the second one is the upper primary now upper primary and primary they are different the first primary is for the age group of 6 to 11 years and classes from 1st to 5 are considered in the primary level right and as i said the age group is 6 to 11 years the second one which is the upper primary stage which is for classes 6 to 8 and the age group is 11 to 14 years of age so we are saying 6 to 8 and the age group is sorry we we said the age group was 11 to 14 years now this level is the elementary level right and we are saying that we are working on the universalization of the elementary level that how is it that we can spread the elementary education across india that is what we are discussing today so basically the meaning of universalization of this elementary education means availability of education everywhere according to the specific need of the child and place so we are saying that for example a child is staying in a rural area so maybe probably because of the less of money or because of the poverty he would like to start working after class 8th or maybe after getting a a basic requirement of education so with that education we if we add a vocational subject to it so we are helping him to earn money at a age which is which is a, you know right maybe the moment he reaches cl- at the age of 16 or 17 so according to the need of the child we are giving him education adding a vocational subject a bit early in the rural areas might help right as compared to the urban areas so we are saying that availability of education everywhere according to the specific need of the child and place the second thing which comes under universalization of education is that it can also be defined as the availability and equal opportunity to everyone so that they can educate themselves right so we are saying that there are two things which are coming under universalization of education the first one is availability of education that's the first one and the second one is this availability of education is as per the equal opportunity that we are giving to everyone so equal opportunity this is what we are saying here availability of education and giving equal opportunity so we can also justify this by saying that universalization of um, edu- elementary education has four things the first one is the universal access so i'll write down here the first one is universal access now what do i mean by universal access universal access is that i'm saying that every child is getting that benefit of the education everywhere it is available he can easily access it if he is staying in some remote area of bihar or maybe some remote area of jammu and kashmir he has the school and he is able to get the education right nobody can deny him for the education 
The second one we are saying is universal again, but universal enrollment. That's the second one. Now, under universal enrollment, we are saying that again, we cannot deny anyone from admission. We cannot say that, oh, you're from um, this particular caste and we are asking you not to join our school. We cannot deny that. We cannot tell a child that, oh, you, you belong to a very poor background, so we are not giving you any admission. If he can afford the fees, nobody can deny him. And if, it is, if the education is free of cost, then of course you cannot deny a child on the basis of saying that, oh, you are from a poor, poor background. So that is universal enrollment, right? The third one is universal retention. Now, universal retention says, as the word retention is saying, that we are retaining the child. We would like to decrease the dropout rate. We want the child to complete his education and not leave his education right after class fifth or after 8th, which usually happens with girls in rural areas because of maybe the sanitation problem or because of the family pressure or maybe because of the child marriage. So the school, the uni this concept is trying to retain the child. At times, even the child is not able to, uh, you know, continue with his education because he finds it quite boring. He thinks that, oh, I, I am not going to, you know, uh, this education is of no use to me. So that is universal retention. So we are trying that the child continues with his education and doesn't go for a dropout. The last one here is universal achievement through quality education. Now, universal achievement. Now, under universal achievement, we are saying that we are telling the child that please work hard and the evaluation score is such that the child is able to uh, get at least above 50%, if not a 99%, but at least he's able to pass the exams. So we are waiting for a situation where everybody in the school is able to pass the exams, right? Now, this universal achievement can come only if there is quality in education, only if we have educated teachers, only if we are teaching the child as per his interest, so as to gain his you know, interest towards the subject, so that he passes the exams easily. So that is what elementary universalization of elementary education is all about. So it basically says availability of education and equal opportunity for everyone. These are the two concepts under universalization of elementary education. The next one says that there are four things which uh, universalization of elementary education is trying to do. The first one is universal access. Everybody gets, gets the access to study. Everybody has the facility to study. The second one says universal enrollment. Everybody gets the admission in the school. The third one says universal retention. Now, universal retention is about uh, retaining the child in the school. And the fourth one is universal achievement. Universal achievement is saying that the child is able to pass his exams. Retain access to mil gaya, enrollment bhi mil gaya, retention bhi mil gaya. So what about the achievement? That whether he is able to retain, um, get the desired scores or not. So this is what is universalization of education. Now, um, there are various projects which have come up uh, under the universalization of elementary education. And we will discuss about all these projects. OK, so as I was saying that we, we are discussing about the projects under the universalization of elementary education. So the first one under this that we will discuss today is Uttar Pradesh Basic Education Project. Now, as the name says, this project was under Uttar Pradesh government. I am sure this much is clear to everyone. That it says Uttar Pradesh Basic Education Project. Now, this project 
was under the government of Uttar Pradesh and this uh, project says the basic education project was launched by the UP state government under assistance of World Bank in 1993. So that was roughly around 20 years back that um, we started with this project. A society of Uttar Pradesh called Sabhi Ke Liye Shiksha Pariyojana Parishad, UP Education for All Project Board was interested the responsibility to implement the project. Now, this project had various objectives. For every, you know, um, project, we will study about the objectives, the strategies, and the activities under it. So, the first objective is what we are going to study about it. The second one is the strategies. And the third one is the activities under this group, under this project. Right? So, this, all these three things for all the four projects that we are going to discuss about. So, first let us begin with the objective. See, so objective of um, the Uttar Pradesh basic education project was universalization of primary education. As we just, just discussed universalization of elementary education. So, before that we had the universalization of primary education. Upper primary and uh, your uh, primary level both the universalization is what the objective was. Second one was universal achievement program for minimum level of learning. Now, we are saying that at least the child is able to complete his, you know, maybe till class 5th or till class 8th or maybe his uh, lower secondary level or the higher secondary level. He is able to achieve that particular result. The next one says provision of education and skill program for the youth or skill development program for the youth. Next uh, objective was female empowerment and greater ge gender equality in education. Now, this says that um, the, the objective of uh, this particular project was that we are empowering our female, uh, you know, uh, students or females in the society and there is gender equality in education, that girls are not barred from taking education. And the next objective was equal education opportunity to the scheduled caste and the scheduled tribe children, that they are also given the education as per the scheduled caste, whether they are scheduled caste or scheduled tribe. So, basically again we are talking about equality, right. Next we move on to the strategies that were adopted. So, the next thing is the strategies of Uttar Pradesh basic education project, that basically what all did they do? What was there in their mind? The first one was strong framework of state and district level planning management and professional support. State organization was established to build the institutional capacity to plan, manage and evaluate different basic educational education development programs. So, different programs were developed. The second strategy that they adopted was early childhood education curriculum and textbook revision, in-service training, women and girl education, strengthening school management were used to improve quality of education. The next strategy was improving access to basic education in 10 districts by constructing more primary and upper primary schools in deprived areas and supporting redesigned implementation of non-formal education for out for out of school children. So, we have done objectives, we have done strategies, now moving on to the activities. That what activities they designed? The first one was educational activities on culture and communication. Second activities that were there in their mind were science and environment, all the activities which were related to the environment, that is what was there in their mind. The third one was creating a sense of social justice. Again, it is related to equality, that everybody is given the equality, that we all are equal and there is justice all around, right? So, we have discussed about Uttar Pradesh basic education project. Now, the second one is the Bihar education project. Now, Bihar education project is again, we will study it again under these three heads. 
what was the objective, what is the strategy, and what are the activities that were designed. So Bihar Education Project. Now Bihar Education, as the name suggests, again, it is related to the state of Bihar in India. The first one was related to Uttar Pradesh, second one is related to Bihar. It says UNICEF, Government of India and Government of Bihar had jointly undertaken this project. The project lays special emphasis on the education of deprived section of the society such as the scheduled caste and the scheduled tribe and of course the women which were lagging behind. So UNICEF, Government of India and the Government of Bihar, all three of them together they joined their hands just to lay emphasis on the education and what three sections were uh, you know given importance? Scheduled caste, scheduled tribes and the women in the society of Bihar. So the objectives of the project again the similar one the first one was universalization of primary education, second one orientation of the educational system so as to serve the objectives of equality for women and their empowerment. Next objective, making necessary interventions to provide equal educational opportunity to adults and children belonging to the lower caste, ethnic communities and poorest sections of the society. The last objective of um, their, you know, of this project was to increase enrollment capacity of the education and reduce the dropout, especially of the girls and the scheduled caste students. We all are, are uh, we all are aware that the girls in every you know rural area they are not given that much of importance. So all these projects, whether it is Uttar Pradesh project or whether it's the Bihar education project, all are working towards the upliftment of the. Um, women in the society or girls in the society. So the strategies that they formed were the first one, construction of about 11,000 primary and upper primary classroom. That was their first strategy. That till the time we don't have the classrooms, where will we uh, where will we ask the students to come and sit, or where we need to give them an environment which at least looks like a classroom, a closed you know door where we can concentrate on education, where we can just talk about education. So their first strategy was construction of 11,000 primary and upper primary classrooms. The second one is recruitment of about 16,000 additional teachers. So yes, the teachers, there were, there were lack of teachers and under this project of Bihar education, we added 16,000 teachers. We are saying that we need more teachers so that the education facility is, you know, there is a standard, there is an increase in the standard. The next one was training of the newly recruited teachers. Now this project stated that if the teachers who are being recruited, they are not properly trained, we cannot retain the child in the school. They have to be trained to teach every child in the classroom, irrespective of their background, irrespective of their mental ability. So training them was very much important. The next strategy which was provision of the materials that has been there um, that have to be constructed. Provision of the materials that have to be constructed in the school for the child and also the provision of increasing the infrastructure in the school. Various labs have to be had to be opened so that the child is able to get the practical knowledge of the subjects. He has a place where he can you know, um, study more about um, uh, a particular subject. The next strategy that they stated was participatory planning and implementation. Of course, everything had to go with a plan and has to be implementation. And the implementation of Mahila Samakhya component, basically again involving women into education. So the activities that they, they you know, did the Bihar education project, the first one was organization of village education committees and community involvement in the program implementation at the grassroots level. 
which was very essential, which was very important that from village or from the grassroot level, we start creating awareness that education is important and it is very beneficial for your child. So what they started doing, that they created communities from the, from, uh, from the villages. A village election committee was formed, which had the uh, people from the village who constituted it and encouraged the people in the village to send their child to the school. The next activity, activity was non-formal education through the non-government organizations. Now, non-formal um, education uh, through NGOs means that you are, but through various channels, you are teaching the child to study. Through various channels, you are, you are making the child study and also taking the help from the NGOs. Now, if the child is not able to go to the school, we are helping, we are, you know, going to where the child is going and teaching him there itself. If he doesn't want to come to the classroom, maybe under a tree we are just making him sit and we have some volunteers who are teaching him there just because he wants to sit there and study. So not restricting it to the classroom or to the school. So taking help from the various NGOs. The next one is organization of state level workshop, training of key persons and primary teachers for minimum level of learning is given. Constitution of core group at district level for women's development. Enrollment drives, poster workshops, expansion of the concept of rural libraries, etc. Now these are what they worked on. Introduction of computerized monitoring system for the education sector. Working on the you know, computerized monitoring that everything in the education sector is working. Right? And then maintaining a record that whether every sector, whether every you know, sector of, in the society is getting all, um, all the things that are required for education. This was this. And then the activities that they considered were, the first one was Mahila Samkhya, which meant to establish local accountability of the schools to play an active role in management of ECCE and NFE centers support teachers and participate in VEC. That is one of the major activity that they worked on. Now moving on to the next project, which was the Lok Jambish. Now Lok Jambish is the project from Rajasthan. Lok Jambish, <clears throat> so the first one is from Uttar Pradesh, second is Bihar, and the next one uh, is from uh, Rajasthan, which is Lok Jambish. I'm writing the name of the state here, which is from Rajasthan, and the name of the project is Lok Jambish. Now, Lok Jambish project, as the name says, Lok is people. It is referred to the term people in Hindi. Now, it says Lok Jambish. People's Movement for Education for All. That is what it meant. It said that it was launched in the year 1992 by the government of Rajasthan with the support of Swedish International Development. Swedish International Development is S-I-D-A. A stands for authority, of course. So Swedish International Development Authority with, with, in collaboration with the you know, government of Rajasthan, they started with this project for, of education, which was called Lok Jambish. It is a program for achieving main goal of universalization of elementary education up to the satisfactory level through formal as well as the non-formal and functional literacy. So basically, we are talking about the universalization of elementary education here. And this project said that uh, we would like to spread education at the elementary level. And they, it could be in two forms, either formal or non-formal. So formal or either the formal um, education or through non-formal education, the target is to teach the child. The child should be taught. And both, through both these waves, we have to achieve universalization of elementary education. So it says, it mainly emphasizes on girls' education and development, post-literacy and continuing education with immediate goals of establishment, 
of the management system and initiation of activities for people's mobilization. This is what the concept said. Now, moving ahead, the objectives were to achieve education for all by the year 2000 through people's mobilization and their participation, to ensure improvement in enrollment of girls by paying attention to the girl child and the women, to empower women by making education an instrument of equality, to bring literacy level up to 80% in the group of 15 to 35. And the next, uh, we move on to the strategies. To develop a mechanism, a bottom level like Perik Dal Bhavan Nirman Committee, Village Education Committee, Khan Satriya Shiksha Prabhandak Samiti. It also said Advaika Manch was created for cre getting participation of the women. To increase the participation of the women, we had the Adhyapika Manch which was created for the participation. Next, increase the number of functionaries at all the levels to start matrix system of management to fulfill their responsibility of working area. Review planning meetings of all the functionaries at cluster and block level was held in every month to review work and plan for next month. And the same process was repeated at the state level with 2 to, two to 3 RPMs. Next was Pravesh Utsav. It is an event through which a positive and a creative environment is created for education amongst the children, the school and the community. So finally, the activities under this were uh, hostels for the tribal children, madrasa, school health program, angarwari centers, mahila shikshak vihar and balika shikshak shivir. Now, all these were the activities under Long Jam, Lo, uh, Lok Jam, Jambish. So, today we have uh, discussed about uh, universalization of elementary education, its meaning. And then we discussed about three projects. The first one is the Uttar Pradesh Basic Education Project. The second one is the Bihar Education Project. And the third one is pro the project from Rajasthan, Lok Jambish. And all these three projects, we studied about their objectives, strategies, and the activities under them. I hope um, the session was clear. Thank you so much.